My name is Pam Guadarroche. I am the executive director here at the Friendship Center. I've been here for 26 years. Prior to the uh, my my current position, I was finance, and then uh, you know prior to that, I actually took part in the programming. So uh, you know, I've been here a long time, and the programs and services that we offer through the Friendship Center is um, everything from zero to elders and seniors programming. So we have justice programming, housing programming. There's a wide range of services that we offer. And it is geared to ensure that we have everything from zero to seniors. So our goal for the Friendship Center is to actually help reduce barriers for our community members. But it's also about having and providing space and opportunity for non-Indigenous people to come into our community to learn and to experience um, different ways of doing things. Really, that's the goal for the Friendship Center. I think when you talk about an example of success, it is really when I see the kids that have gone through our programs grow and then they bring their kids back. I think that to me is one of the largest key pieces of when you talk about success. It means that it benefited them enough that it means enough to them to bring their own kids back, to be able to continue the, the connection through language and cultural and all those traditional pieces, to me that's, that's really the biggest key piece when you talk about um, the excellence around what we do. And it talks about you know, access to tradition and cultural pieces. I think that's the biggest piece. For me, when you talk about excellence in education, it's one that is completely intertwined with language, with access to cultural activities outside, having access to elders, that traditional knowledge. So when we're talking about that, you have to have access to the traditional knowledge. So the elders, the traditional teachings, the, the um, connection to the land, language, all of that will lead to the excellence. And that, it doesn't matter which program it's in, if you have that in each program, it's very successful and it is an excellent way to showcase who we are, what we are and where we're going. Well, the big thing is, and I think I've already touched on this, you're talking about real access and I say real access and I mean, you know, the real opportunity to um, work with elders, to have language incorporated in everything we do. To be able to have the connection to the to to the outside and bringing your connection to the land, in the elements that we're we're involved in every day, but bringing them in and having our kids experience that and acknowledging that that is a good thing um, to to be connected. So I think that for me that that would be the biggest piece. We'll we'll see where it goes, but it it is a word that I. Uh, I just, I really hope people think long and hard on it before before they actually go down that road. Because I, I won't lie, it's probably one of the more scary ones that I've seen in a long time. Because it looks like, and my experience to date has been, people calling and seeing what they can get for free from us. And that that can't be. It's not my responsibility as a friendship center to provide you with education that I don't know what you're going to do with it. What are you actually going to do with what we teach you? And there needs to be a better understanding of how that happens instead of us just, here you go, because we're good at that. We love to share, and, I, and I'm the first one. I, I love to share what we have, but when it gets to the institution stages, I also know how wrong that can go. And because, again, they continue to think, this way well how are we going to fit that in here instead of how do we make this actually fit the needs of the communities so i i just challenge people to just just think about it you guys are young think about these things and and just question them there's no reason why you shouldn't be questioning just because somebody says this is a good thing really how's that worked for us in the past which is, which is great, but there still has to be the connection to the community. So whether it's a friendship center or a First Nations community that's nearby, it has to come from community. And 
those are great pieces, but the institution itself has to change the way they do things. It's great that they're going to have a resource center there or a little class, or which is fantastic. But again, we're having to go into that environment. Why can't it be the other way around? Why I challenge people. Why, why does it we still have to take and insert our people? Because what happens is they, then they lose their connection because it is tough. It is really hard coming from a community into a uh, urban setting. If you're in an urban setting, you know, their second and third generations now have been off reserve. Again, they've lost connection. So how do we, you know, friendship centers are one way to do that. But again, why isn't it that the institutions can't come to the community? Why can't that institution come to the Friendship Center and say, look, we're going to start offering classes, we're going to work with you, and bring resources to us instead of trying to always take resources from the community and inserting it? Why can't it be the other way around? Why can't you take your resources and put it in the community? I, I just, I don't understand personally why that can't be. Why is it because what's happening, we're getting 10, 20, 30 calls a week now. Well, we're trying to indigenize and, you know, can you provide somebody um, to do this? And I'm like, so you want me to take my staff, take them out of here and put them in your institution? No. Why don't you provide your staff to me and that's a better connection? Because what's happening is people are now starting to try to figure their way out. They're, and it's it's a made up word. Somebody made up the word, and you ask people what that means, and they don't understand. You know, when when you talk about it, and and I believe there are good people that believe they're doing the right thing. I just think there's a better way to do it, and 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 it's absolutely necessary that institutions, um, whether it's justice, whether it's education, whether it's whatever it may be should and they have a responsibility to make sure that they have a resource center for indigenous students absolutely they should be doing that but just because you have a re resource center is that indigenized i i'm going to challenge you that it's not because what what they're doing is saying they're indigenizing this and now they're competing for dollars for um, doing programs and services for Indigenous students with organizations like a Friendship Center, like some of the communities. And that's wrong. That's not reconciliation at all. So I challenge people, what needs to change if you want to indigenize, you need to change the way things are done. Institutions are the most colonial ways of being because that's where it was developed. That's where it came from. That's, you know, I've had conversations with um, lawyers, Indigenous lawyers, and, you know, they're not taught to think in the community mindset. They're taught in a colonized way of justice. Education is the same thing. Those systems are the best ways to colonize us as Indigenous people. Because you, you, you're, you're only learning. You're only learning what those institutions are teaching. When in community, you need your language. You need access to elders. You need access to the, to the environment. You need to learn because that's who we are. You, you need to learn who we are and how we are being in our own environment. That institution is not our environment. That is a foreign environment. And, and I, you know, I, I just challenge people to think a little bit differently when it comes to indigenization. And I'm going to indigenize, um, you know, the institution. Really? Um, you know, it's colonization, um, again, taking from our communities, it needs to be reversed. And until people start reversing it, nothing will ever improve. I think it's well-meaning and I think people really I, I do I believe people really want to do things differently but we can't think outside the box human we're, you know you got to start doing things differently human beings like you know we we like things consistent nobody really likes change but 
Change is good. Change is challenging. Change is um, what's needed for all of our communities to, to grow in a way that, you know, it's just, I challenge people to, to just think about it differently. And I don't, you know, I have no problem with people wanting to make an environment better suited for our community. Um, but when you start talking and having conversations around indigenizing, under no circumstances should a non-indigenous person be teaching around cultural pieces. And I've seen that. Well, we'll just create, we're going to create the curriculum and then we're going to just teach it. No, it's, it's not as simple as creating curriculum. It's, it's, it's actually living and breathing and walking within community. That's when you get the real difference. And we'll, we'll see where it goes, but I, I'm, I wish I had better faith when it comes to, to that word. I just, every hair on the back of my neck stands up because I believe good people want to do things for the right reasons, but it's also just another tick box for some people that, oh, look, we've done this, 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 and this. You know, we have an elder, but are you really using the elder? You have a resource center. What resources are in that center that are culturally appropriate and What's the connection to the community? What's the connection to environment? What's the, you know, I just, I hope people really think long and hard about that word and what does that really mean? I, I worry that it's the new phrase, you know, we, we, every, I call it the flavor of the month because that's what happens a lot of times with, with, um, government institutions, you know, everybody gets on the kick. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And it can't be that. It has to be a long-term, real will to do things differently. And I worry that that's not different enough. I, I do. And, you know, you, you talk about resources. Well, the biggest part is not taking from our community, but giving to our community. I hope for the future is that everything is done within community. It's not community having to go to institutions, but it should be reversed. Institutions should be coming to the communities. They should be making adaptations for what they do within community so that our people are not forced to go to institutions outside of community. That's when you get a real understanding of reconciliation, whether it's RCAP, UNDRIP, the TRC, um, all of those talk about doing things differently that's when you're going to get changed. That's when you're going to see our communities really thrive in ways we've, we're only now starting to do. And it, it, it's not us bending. It's the institutions. It's the existing rules, policies that are out there that hold us back, that were designed to keep community from growing. Once that stops and it's flipped around, that's when you're going to see real change. And that's a benefit to everybody. That's a benefit whether you're from an Indigenous community or a non-Indigenous community. There needs to be a real buy-in of doing things differently. And we talk about funding is one piece, but it is how do we do things differently? How do we change the way we do things? How do we change policy? How do we change um, just conversations? Those resources that are needed, lots of times you can connect them to funding, but sometimes it is a little different. Sometimes it's resources from government, all levels of government, changing policies to ensure we can do what we need to do. There needs to be additional manpower. There needs to be materials and supplies. There needs to be all of that, but there's an, that missing link is a real understanding around policy development, changing policy of how we do things. It's challenging people, once again, to look at things differently. Just because you've done something a certain way for generations doesn't necessarily mean we've done it right. And I think our communities know that best. So how do we change and challenge those resources? And again, having those resources come to community and not the other way around. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, you know, we kind of have the conversation around, you know, for example, the new building. We, we know that the new building is doing things differently. 
you know, there's that self-sustainable model, being able to stand on our own two feet. But having institutions come to us, so um, a transition year program for students coming into the community, but then the university coming into our community to offer the first, maybe maybe first, second, and third year, and maybe then they can go to the institutions. But just because we've always done things a certain way doesn't mean we can't change it. And we really need to start looking at how we do things differently. There's nothing any worse, and I, I hate it when I sit down at a table and somebody looks at me, and you're having a full-blown conversation on reconciliation, and they look at you and they go, well, I don't know if I can do that. Well, why? Well, we just don't do it that way. Okay, so we're having a conversation on reconciliation. Having reconciliation is doing things differently. We have to start pushing the envelope. We have to find the champions within the systems that want to do things differently. It's having those allies that really want to challenge those just the way, that's the way we do it. Nothing will ever change if we continue down that path. It's really finding an alternative way, a different way, because what, let's be honest, what we've done today hasn't worked for us, and it's not going to work for us. And I know, you know, there's this new move on, you know, we're going to indigenize institutions. I, I can't, I, my hair on the back of my neck stands up every time I hear that word, because I think that's just another way to come in, take information to our community and put it in an institution. It needs to be reversed. The institution needs to come into our area, our space, and then they change what they do not us giving them more information and so that they can be institutionalized in, in, um, in a way that's indigenized, that's another colonial word. I, and I know that's the hot topic, and I, and I know this way off topic here, but, but the reality is, is that you're doing the same thing. It's colonization, it's a different word. And now what they're doing is taking our information that we we hold, and they're trying to shove it into institutions, into government, into organizations. That needs to stop. Stop trying to make it the other way. It's not our responsibility as community to do that. It has to be, okay, you come into our community and you adapt what you're doing and you become part of the community. That's where, that's when it will change. I, you know, and I know it's a hot topic, and I know everybody loves this new, we're going to indigenize. But when I sit back and I look at that, that's just another way of colonization with a different word. Because what I see is people coming in, taking our information again, but for a good cause this time, and they're going to put it in their institutions. And it has to stop. It, that's, that's the wrong way of doing things for me. And, and that's my own personal feeling. I believe that it needs to be flipped around. We need to do things differently. We were, we were taken from our lands and shoved into these little boxes. That's the world we know. That is what we know. It's wrong. However, why once again, again, am I the one who's being forced to take the information we have and insert it in institutions? It's got to stop. It's got to be the other way around. It's got to be the institutions coming into our space and them fitting what we need, not the other way around. And, and what it seems like now is it's flipped around. Like they want us to help indigenize. What does that mean? That's right. You're going to take our knowledge and opportunities and shove it into institutions that don't work for our people in the beginning. Right? For me, stop that. Let's do things differently. Stop the indigenization and let's truly do something different. The institutions failed us and will continue to fail us until that whole system changes. So whether it's justice, education, you know, even housing and homelessness, it doesn't matter what it is. We need to stop doing things the way that um, we've always done it and start just challenging each other to do things just a little bit different. Because once you start doing something different, and you go, oh, this is working, then, then it'll just grow, and it'll be a natural growth. So I, I don't know, I, you know, I always get upset when they start talking about indigenization, because 
to me, that's not the way to do it. It's just, I don't know. It's just another way of doing things the same way, but with a different word. So 